The parallel curve command allows you to create a curve that is parallel to an existing curve at a specified offset distance. So in other words, as we have here, we have a curve in 3D space, or a spline, we could say. And I'm going to go ahead and want to create a parallel curve of it. To do so, let's go down to our wireframe section, and in the action bar, let's look for the parallel curve. Here we find it. Now, if you don't see it, go ahead and select this arrowhead that's pointing downward. Select on it, and go ahead and select parallel curve. Right away, get a parallel curve definition dialog box. And the first thing we're going to select is our curve, as shown here. And now we're going to need a support or a plane. And usually the plane you want to select is probably the one that you created it on. So we're going to select this one, the XY. And now we have a constant, so we're going to have something to move it away from the original, because right now it is directly on top of it. To do so, you can do it one of two ways. Uh, notice that we hover over this sphere, and we can pull it with the left mouse button, click and hold and drag. We can pull it either way. And as we pull it, notice that the distance becomes larger. And if we look in the constant, we see we have here the distance the same as we were pulling it. Now, next it's asking for a point. This is basically where the reference curve is to be offset to, where we're going to place that curve. Now, if you have a set point in space, you can also select that as well. Next, we have a parameters area, which gives us a parallel mode and a parallel corner type. Now, under parallel mode, we have a drop-down menu, which gives us Euclidean and geodesic. The Euclidean allows the shortest distance possible between both curves regardless of the support. This allows you to, the choice to offset the curve at a constant distance from the initial element. If I select geodesic, notice that we don't have a parallel corner type option. This allows the shortest distance possible between both curves taking the support curvature into account. In this case, the offset always is constant to every point on the curve and you do not need to select a parallel corner type, as I just said. Now both allow you to select in the smoothing. Using smoothing, you can smoothen the parallel curves by defining continuity. You can smooth the curve by selecting the three choices that are shown here. None deactivates the smoothing result. Tangency enhances the current continuity to tangent continuity. And curvature enhances the, the current continuity to curvature continuity. Now if I select either one of these, I will get a deviation which allows you to specify the maximum deviation for a G1 or G2 smoothing by entering a value or using the arrows. There's also 3D smoothing. When this box is checked, the smoothing is performed without specifying any support surface. The resulting smooth curve has better continuity quality and is not exactly laid down on the surface. Now next we have the reverse direction. If I go ahead and see so it's placed that at none and I'm going to select reverse direction. This allows you to reverse the side of the placement of the curve. Notice my arrow over here was placed over here. Now it's over here. If I also want to select both sides, notice I can place a curve on both sides of my original curve. But also notice that since it's parallel, where it becomes tighter, it becomes almost a point, as you can see right in here. Whereas the larger the curve is grown as it's pulled away in the opposite side. When you're all set, go ahead and select OK to create your curve. You can always go back within the specification tree, either using your left mouse button to double click on parallel, or you can right click, select parallel one object, definition, and you can now edit your curve. And that is parallel curve.